Okay, hello again. Um, this is a, a presentation about uh, BIM policy development uh, with uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Mohammed Qasim. Um, I'm just going to directly dive into it. There's a lot to cover, but uh, it is, will branch a bit from what we discussed before. Uh, but here we are really focusing on the macro scale, um, understanding uh, BIM policy uh, development challenges, and giving you just a taste of uh, how, what, what, what it takes to develop a, um, a roadmap. Now, this is based on lots of research, and this is very, a quick summary. So we're going to do a tag team, myself and, and Hamad. we we'll probably exchange once or twice, okay? No, uh, really tricky. Um, we'll see. So part one, BIM policy challenges. What are the BIM policy challenges we're trying to solve? One is that uh, decision support systems for BIM policy makers are not there, really. Uh, if a BIM policy, uh, you know, a policy maker wants to develop uh, something about BIM diffusion adoption, there's nothing really to rely upon. There's not, no research in, in the field, and this is really what we try to address. Um, Benchmarks, there's no benchmarks to assess uh, a country against another. So how do we you know, compare ourselves to the UK or Singapore or whatever? These benchmarks are not available, uh, and so we had to do something about that. It's a work in progress, but uh, it's a really uh, interesting problem to try and solve. And the third is there's so many of these uh, BIM documents. You've probably seen, I don't know how many, 100 BIM guides now. Uh, they're, they resemble each other. They're, they're, something's called the standard in one country. It's called the protocol in another, and you know, etc. So we try to understand what's happening here and try to clarify what is a really a protocol, what is a standard, etc. So I'm going to skip a couple of slides. So there's, there's, uh, we've developed over, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe two years, uh, a set of uh, models that we use in assessing the performance the macro maturity and macro adoption of countries. Um, there's five of them I'm going to present today. They're quite different. Together, they help a policymaker uh, to either develop a roadmap, just to think about a roadmap, or will help us and other researchers to look at different countries and try to compare them. So that's really what we're trying to do, help policymakers or uh, help researchers to investigate their own markets. So there's five of these uh, models. Uh, I'm going to briefly explain these five and then give the, uh, the mark to uh, Muhammad. Uh, the first one, we call it uh, uh, the diffusion areas model. And if, I don't know if you remember from the pre uh, previous presentation, we discussed modeling, collaboration, and integration. Remember that? OK, now this is mapped against another three topics, something called technologies, something called processes and policies. So anything we can discuss about BIM, it typically either covers a technology or covers a process of how people work together or covers standards and protocols or how people would like to organize work or contracts and stuff like that. Now, to, to assess, uh, to have a comprehensive understanding of uh, the maturity uh, or the fusion of BIM within a market, we need to map these two. We have to see, look at modeling technologies, we look at collaboration technologies. We look at integration technologies separately. We also look at, for example, modeling uh, processes and modeling protocols and policies, etc. So we have these nine areas which we can focus on to assess the diffusion of BIM within a market. So I'm just quickly to another uh, model. Now here, if we want to understand uh, all the things that a policy maker will need to think about when they are developing a policy for their country, there's only eight major topics uh, to be covered. So these uh, eight, or you can see here, I don't know, maybe not clear, there's technology at number one, objectives, stages and milestones. So whether a country or a market has clear objectives about BIM, when do they want to implement it? Is it staged, et cetera? So we look at that. We look at the availability of champions and drivers. Champions are really volunteers. Drivers are if you want, paid or uh, assigned by the government. Then we look at uh, regulatory framework, the availability of uh, you know, insurance policies, contracts, etc. Uh, noteworthy publications, we'll cover that a little bit later on, but the availability of these guides and protocols and manuals. We look if there's a learning uh, and education framework, meaning uh, how do they teach BIM in, in a country, whether it's organized. Uh, we look at measurements and benchmarks, do they measure the maturity, the capability uh, within that market? We look at that. Uh, we look at the standards, standardized deliverables. Do they have 
re-standardized object library? Do they have something similar to model uses in order to uh, standardize the deliverables and requirements? And we look, of course, at the technology infrastructure. Do they have accessibility, affordability of software? Uh, do they have a fast broadband, etc.? So we use this to, to look at the maturity components within a, a country. <coughs> now, another model, completely different. Here we look at different countries will have different dynamics of adoption. So some countries will have something called a top-down model. You've heard uh, top-down about the, the UK, how they're approaching BIM. I think by April 21st uh, this year, we can consider them to be top-down. At the moment, they're not, but once the, the mandate comes, comes into force, we can consider them to be top-down. You've heard about bottom-up. We heard the, the example from Germany, from uh, ILCA. Uh, it's really about when organizations adopt and over time, uh, others imitate them and then larger organizations will, will follow and then it becomes the norm and the, the, the government or the authority will either mandated or recommended or you know, put some uh, uh, what's called acceptance, some kind of gateways. And the third and most important dynamic uh, which we introduce is called the middle out. Actually, this is the most important dynamic. I mean, we, you know about top down, you know about bottom up, but this is the third one is important because it's missed. It's when large organizations, uh, maybe the defense department, etc., uh, adopt something, adopt them, and because of their size, they will push it down to their supply chain, and because of their size, they will be able to influence the policies uh, within the government and, and, and force the uh, adoption, or at least the diffusion. So that's another model, and we can look at countries and see what kind of dynamic suits that country, or what, what kind of dynamic is applied in that country, and it's based on that, other things ensue. The fourth model. Here we are looking at what the policies, uh, policy actions taken by the policy maker. Uh, some countries uh, uh, prefer a passive approach by the policy maker, so the policy maker does not do anything, really. They just uh, make aware people about BIM, maybe you know, just uh, encourage them to move in a certain direction. Or it could be more active, they, they really spend money into education, into incentives. Or it could be uh, more uh, you know, prescriptive, assertive, where they say, you have to adopt BIM, BIM, and this is what we mean by BIM, and these are the standards that you need to follow, etc. So these three approaches matched by activities, you've got nine actions and we can uh, measure these and understand the difference between countries. And the last, well, but not least, model is really who is responsible for BIM diffusion and who should we work with and who should do what? Uh, we identified uh, nine players, uh, if you want, which are different from the individual to the you know, educational sector, to the uh, association, architects association or engineers association, to building smart like a technology advocate or the communities of practice, user groups. You've got nine of these. You know, eight of them, except the individual, we remove it. We can map them against the eight components, you know, say whose responsibility to develop this or who is doing that. So we can use it both for measurement and for planning. These are the eight, uh, sorry, the five uh, models. And I'm gonna stop here and give a moment. And uh, in this section, I'll explain uh, the result we obtained from benchmarking about 20 countries using uh, the five model we just, uh, Bilal just explained. Uh, basically, we contacted about 95, more than 100 experts. We got the answer from 95 experts. And this is a number of, this is a country, a uh, sample country we are uh, covering in the presentation. They include uh, from all regions, South America, North America, Europe, uh, 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 Southeastern uh, Asia. And uh, I'll show the, mo the result model by model. If I start with the first one, uh, the first one basically is measuring the diffusion area, the nine diffusion area, area, area Bilal explained. By the way, I'm not showing all countries here, 20 countries here. I'm showing just a sample because uh, to make it more clearly visual, visually. So in this, for example, here you could, you could see quickly that different countries have different level of diffusion. Uh, but there is a trend among all countries where modeling and its uh, capability stages, its uh, fields, basically, uh, modeling is the most... Uh, 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 the most, uh, the highly rated, the most uh, highly rated in most countries, uh, and this is a trend among all countries. And this is logical, given all the presentation we have seen, like level two, level three, and uh, modeling, collaboration, integrations, are all subsequent levels. If I move to model two, uh, model two basically is measuring those eight area of uh, eight area of uh, macro maturity, eight, eight areas that should be in any country, 
uh, to within a national initiative, for example, you can see, for example, there is a clear lead here for the UK, uh, which scored like higher, much higher than, not much higher, hi higher, relatively high, a little bit higher than other countries in all the eight areas. And uh, for example, Spain, you could see as well, uh, all eight components are uh, present. However, uh, the maturity is still low and low medium in across all the eight component. If I move to model three, uh, the same model, but I just take one of the component, and in this case, I'm taking the objective milestone and stages, you can clearly see that in most countries, really, they all fall below one. Below one means they all stand at a very at low maturity. The only two countries which are above, really, above two are the UK and China, and that means the objective, miles, the objective and milestones in those countries are well defined and well managed centrally, okay? If I move to model, uh, the third model, uh, the third model actually is about uh, the dynamics, the diffusion dynamics. And it's very interesting to see that most countries, 65% of countries we uh, investigated, they have uh, the dynamic which is middle out, where large players, they diffuse beam down to the supply chain and upward to uh, the policy. Only two countries are uh, top down in this uh, scheme, it's uh, in this uh, study are Hong Kong, uh, the UK, and Emirates. Moving on to the next model, the next model basically is mapping the policy action across countries. And again, here you find 65% uh, of countries, uh, the policy maker approach to BIM is fully passive in terms of uh, uh, communication, engagement, and mon monitoring. In the Netherlands, we have a slightly different approach where it's, uh, it has two active elements, which are basically the policy maker are educating, incentivizing the industry to adopt BIM. Uh, in five countries, we found uh, another pattern, basically, uh, in 20% in, in of the country, which, which are five, we find an approach where it's about educating, encouraging, and observing. So it's, again, mixing some element of active approach with some element of passive approach. Finally, you ha we have the UK, which is uh, different from all other countries. We have a mixture of uh, passive and, uh, sorry, uh, mostly uh, active and assertive, where we have education, enforcement, and tracking. So those are the different patterns. Moving on to uh, uh, the model uh, showing uh, the role, the contribution of the different player groups in different countries, you can see like different countries really, uh, they have different level of contribution from the player groups. Some countries are more ba balanced like the Netherlands, all eight player group are contributing to pushing the BIM strategy of that country. Other countries, for example, you can see like the New Zealand, the policymaker role is very, very tiny, almost absent. Uh, the final model is uh, uh, basically instead of uh, just measuring, uh, rating uh, the policy, uh, uh, the group player contribution, we could really more qualitatively rate it as like uh, Supporting, leading, supporting, and participating. And this is a slightly better representation than the previous one. It could be used in planning responsibilities within a national BIM strategy. Uh, now, the section, uh, would you like Gilan to move here? Uh, in this section, basically, we ha there is a problem. Like, for example, Brian just explains the LOD. Some people would call LOD a standard. LOD are not standard. LOD are specification. So, and, and this problem goes over and over again to all type of document. Protocols they are called, guides are called protocols. Uh, standard are called specification. It's all, it's, it's all mixed, really. Not only really in translation, also in English-speaking countries, we have this problem. So what we did, we developed a taxonomy uh, where we specify what is a guide, what is a protocol, and what's a mandate, and what should be included in each of the document types. And we realize that building, International Building Smart, they have a similar project, uh, and we are now uh, exchanging experience in this area. And what we did, after the, developing this taxonomy, we went we, and we mapped uh, 60, about 60 documents from eight countries across, those, across that taxonomy, and we find really there are some, some countries they are covering like uh, the guide mandates and, uh, and protocols. Some countries are mostly like uh, 
as uh, they have no mandate at all, like the Australia in terms of uh, their BIM documents. Uh, moving on, uh, the same documents, we could really develop a specific metric to measure their relevance. We could measure them uh, across like uh, uh, this metric from R0 to R4, from redundant, relevant, regarded, recommended, required, required. And this metric could be really important to prioritize or like filter those uh, a highly regarded document, BIM document from those like which contain information that's already outdated. Uh, finally, uh, based really on this research, I'll explain quickly how we how you could use those models to develop a process map. Based on this research, one day we got a call from the Brazilian government said, uh, we have seen your work, your work is very interesting, we want you to develop a policy roadmap for Brazil. And he asked us really to look at five countries. He said, Look at these five countries in the EU, analyze them retrospectively, and tell me what should I do for my country. And we, at that time, we didn't have the metrics to measure each of the eight area, uh, uh, each of the eight component. So we used a simple traffic light system that goes from something just start, not started, something just started, something under development, uh, development, and something well developed. And we did this for all eight area. So you have on the left side, you have all eight components and on top you have countries. And you could follow this map easily. You could look, for example, at a country where there is a red, red light. Uh, that red light, for example, uh, in the case of Finland, I could look uh, horizontally and look where there is a purple light and I could go and learn from that country. And we did this at the end of this. We developed a, uh, with the participation of all stakeholders, all of them in Brazil, we developed a uh, policy roadmap for the country, which is, uh, you can access it, it's available publicly, which cover all the eight areas in terms of roles, responsibility, what to do, how to develop a mandate, what the mandate should look like. It's available in public domain. You could have a look at it uh, if you are interested in knowing more about it. Uh, would you like to do this, Bilal? Uh, thank you very much. I'll leave, leave you with the last two slides with Bilal. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for much. Okay. No? Okay, uh, just quickly, there's only one minute and 34 seconds and 27%, whatever. So BIM policy development, just a quick and generic. So we're just going to use one model. Remember, all these models are generic. They're not uh, mapped to time, for example. There's no milestones or what, whatever. And they are independent. We can, of course, um, combine them all in a, in a framework. But we're going to give you just a, a couple of examples. So we, we take uh, this, what we call model B, or the macro maturity components. There are eight in it. They are interconnected. Even these small con components are interconnected. We can measure them independently, but also we can measure them as an interconnected uh, mesh. One way at looking at them is that just put them in a, in a matrix, for example, and you've got these eight. You can put against the milestones, let's say 2017, 18, etc. It doesn't really matter. You can put whatever milestones you like. And then you can, for each of these milestones, you can say, what is the maturity for that specific component at that specific time? This is just a, a, a template that a policymaker can use. You can change the text inside to suit their culture, to, to their macro maturity, uh, macro adoption uh, dynamic, because each country is different. And even within the same country, there are different dynamics for different uh, regions. So that's it for us. We still have 21 seconds. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. <laughs>